Hello guys, I'm Paul McWhorter and I am here with Arduino lesson number seven. And in this lesson, we're gonna be looking at a new type of loop. We're gonna be looking at while loops. And we've done looping before. We've done looping with for loops. And the while loop is not better than a for loop. It's just a little bit different. The truth is you could do almost anything that you ever wanted to do with a for loop, but you do need to understand a while loop because there might be a few unique circumstances that a while loop would be better than a for loop. And also you might be looking at someone else's code and you might see this and think, well, gee, what's that about? And so a while loop is just another way to loop. Okay, Some people prefer for loops. Some pre people prefer while loops. 99% of the time, a job you could do with either a for loop or a while loop. Just to kind of catch you up where we are, we are still working on this two LED circuit. The two LED circuit, if you need help hooking this up, we really went through it in quite a bit of detail in lesson number three. You can see the link down in the description of this video. I will give you, uh, you can go there and go to lesson three and you can see to, how to hook this circuit up. And then also, if you look at our resources for uh, lesson number seven, which we're on now you can get this code that we've been building in this series of lessons okay you can kind of see what I'm doing here every lesson I just build a little bit on uh, on the previous lesson and so far we haven't changed the circuit a, lo a lot because basically it's hard to learn circuits and programming at the same time so so for right now in these lessons we're kind of working with this circuit and we're learning a lot of programming very quickly though we're going to have these core programming skills and then we're going to start expanding what we're doing on the circuit side. So as you go through this series of lessons, we're going to be over here learning about programming and then over here learning about circuits and always our circuits and our programs working uh, working together. But for right now, we're going to do a couple more lessons still with this two, uh, with this two uh, LED circuit. So again, go to lesson three if you need help getting that uh, hooked up. Go to lesson seven and you can get this code so you can catch up with uh, with where we are if you have not uh, not been working with us. <coughs> what we did in the last lesson is basically we've got a lot of programming tools under our belt already, and it's starting to get pretty uh, pretty fancy what we can do. Uh, basically, if we look at this code, up here at the top, we declare our variables, then in our void setup, we put the things in the void setup that we want to do one time. The void setup, like all clauses, they're sort of like a paragraph. It starts with the open curly bracket and it ends with the closed curly bracket. So everything between those curly brackets is the void setup. What we do is we turn the serial port on. We do our pin modes, right? Anytime you're going to use an a pin in Arduino, you need to tell it whether it's going to be an output or an input. Then we prompt the user for information. We print out to the user's serial monitor how many times do you want the red LED to blink. <coughs> then we wait for him to answer, and then we read his answer into the variable numRed blinks. We do the same thing for the yellow blinks. So we find out how many times he wants to blink, and then we blink the red LED, and then we blink the yellow LED. <coughs> In this particular version of the program, we prompt the user for the number of blinks in the void setup. So once he enters it, then it just goes, it blinks the red one, then it blinks the yellow one. It blinks the red one, it blinks the yellow one. If we wanted to change that every time, these inputs or these prompts, <coughs> we would go ahead and put in the void loop instead of the void setup. And that, that way, every time through the loop, it would ask the user for input. But the, the point is that at this point, we can go out and we can get information from the user. We can do something based on that information, and then we can send information back out to the user. So all of a sudden, we're getting a lot of these puzzle pieces put together. Let's just take a quick look at this program, see what it's doing now. We download the program. Uh, we interact with the user right now through the serial monitor. Remember, we always turn the serial monitor on if we're going to use it, and we turn the serial monitor on with a serial.begin and we can call up that serial monitor and then it asks me how many times do you want the red LED to blink? I think five. Don't want to play favorites here so the yellow one we're going to blink five times as well. Okay. <coughs> now you notice the red is going to blink five and then the yellow blinks five and in synchronized with that blinking over here we're printing out to the serial monitor we're printing out 
which LED is blinking and which blink we're on. So you see we're getting a lot, a lot of these little pieces, uh, a lot of these little pieces working together now. Well, the truth is, is that there's another type of loop that you can do. You can see here the way we did this was we did it with a for loop. The for loop here is blinking the red and then the for loop here is blinking the yellow. And the way the for loop <laughs> works is we just say for and then we set some integer, we call it J, it could have been I, it could have been Z, it could have been your name, it could have been anything, but this counter, we set it, we tell it to start at 1, we tell it to keep going through this loop as long as that variable J is less than or equal to this number, and then we tell it every time that it goes through, we want it to increment J by 1. And so this is the condition. It is going to keep looping as long as this condition is true. Okay, the loop starts with the open curly bracket and the loop ends with the closed curly bracket. Okay, that's what we've sort of been call calling a clause. It's like a, a little group of that's inside those curly brackets that all sort of uh, uh, happens uh, happens together, happens in sequence. Okay, so that's that's how a for loop works, and that's uh, that's pretty neat. But there's another type of loop that we can do, <clears throat> and it's called a while loop. So let's take a look at a while loop. I'll just open up a new window here and we'll just write a really minimal program to kind of show you how a, a while loop works. We're not going to be doing any blinking of the LEDs with this so we don't need to go in and do any pin modes or declare a lot of variables. The one thing we do need to do though is we need to open our serial monitor. So we do a serial.begin okay, and the serial, the S is capital. <coughs> let's go 115,200 <clears throat> and then ending in a colon, semicolon. Okay, That's about all we probably need to do right now in the void setup. Let's come down here to the void loop. This is how you do a while loop. If you're going to do a while loop, you probably need a counter. And so we need to have some sort of counter. Usually we call a counter either I or J or CNT. Let's go ahead and call it J. So I'm going to declare a counter j, and it's an int. And so I've declared my variable j as an int. I've created the bucket. I've labeled the bucket j, and I've told it that that bucket is going to contain ints. <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and put a number in the bucket. I'm going to set it equal to 1. Okay. <coughs> Now you could declare that variable up at the very top before the void setup. If you did, it would be a global variable and all the programs would be working with that same value of J. A lot of times it's good to not use global variables but to use local variables. And if the only thing that really needs to know about this J is this while loop I'm fixing to make, then maybe it makes more sense to make it a local variable and declare it here inside the void loop. So we now have a counter and that counter variable we have called j, and we have initialized that counter to 1. So let's be good boys and girls, and let's put our comment in here. Uh, we're going to declare that j is an int, and set it equal to 1. Okay. Now this is where we're going to do our while loop. And the way a while loop is, I'm going to put a white uh, line there just to make it a little easier to see what I'm doing. We're going to say while, and we're going to turn the phone off, sorry. Okay. <clears throat> we are going to, let me uh, get that off so it doesn't. Okay. We are going to, sorry about that. <clears throat> We're going to start our while loop with the word while, and then we will put some condition. We will come back and put some condition between these parentheses. And this loop will continue to execute as long as that condition is true. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, and I'm going to start my while loop. It starts with a curly bracket, and it's going to end with a closing curly bracket. And any time I make a loop, whether it's a while loop or a for loop or any type of clause, I put that ending curly bracket in right when I create the loop. Okay? Because if you don't, you're going to come in here and you're going to write a lot of code, and then you're going to not, you're going to forget to put your curly bracket there, and then you're going to see this and say, oh, I got a curly bracket. 
Problem is this curly bracket goes with this one. This one opens the void loop. This one closes the void loop. This one opens the while uh, loop and this one closes the while loop. So anytime I put a loop in, I go ahead and I put my starting bracket and my ending, uh, my starting curly bracket and my ending curly bracket. And so now this clause is going to continue to execute as long as the conditional that you put in here <coughs> is true. Okay, so let's put a conditional in here. We're going to say keep looping as long as j, our counter, is less than or equal to, let's say, 10. Okay, <clears throat> so this is going to keep looping as long as j is less than or equal to 10. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to do a print serial.print and I want it to increment to the next line each time. So I'm going to say print ln like that. And then what am I going to print? I'm going to print the variable j. I'm, I'm, the j does not go in quotes because j is a variable. I don't want it to print the character j. I want it to print the variable j. You remember the j bucket? What's in the j bucket? That's what I want to see. So I just say print line j. <coughs> and in all of our commands, we end with a colon. All right. Now I want you to look at this and think for just a second. What would happen if we ran this right now? Just look at it and ponder it for a second. Well, we come up, j is equal to 1. So is j less than or equal to 10? Yes, it prints j. And then it comes back, is j less than or equal to 10? Yes, it prints j, it prints j, it prints j, it prints j. There's no way for it to break out of this loop because j is staying at the value 1. And so what we've done here is we created an infinite loop. And if we ran it, it would just sit and print out the number 1 forever. So what you've got to do <coughs> when you write a while loop is you've got to make sure you're doing something that lets you break out of the loop. And what you typically do is you increment your counter. j is equal to j plus 1. <coughs> so the first time through, j is 1. When you get to the bottom loop, j is equal to 1 plus 1, which becomes 2. And then the next time th through, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 10. Well, is j less than or equal to 10? Yes, it goes through the 10th time. It adds 1 to j when it comes back up here. At that point, j is 11. It does not enter the loop. It comes down here, and it just does the next line after the end of the loop. So it keeps looping as long as j is less than or equal to 10, and each time j is equal to j plus 2. Okay. So let's go ahead and run this. It's, ooh, ooh, forgot my colon. Why didn't somebody say you forgot your colon? Semicolon. All right, now let's see. <clears throat> Looks like things are happy. Let's look at our serial monitor and look at that. <clears throat> printing a lot of numbers, but it's printing so fast we can't really see it. So one of the things you see is computers can run a lot faster than we can keep track of them and so if we want to be looking at these numbers we need to put something in there to slow it down and so let's slow it down let's put a delay in this loop of about 250 so that it will kind of pause about a quarter of a second remember these delays are in milliseconds so it'll pause at about a quarter of a second and so we can see the numbers coming by a little better all right download the program it's green Everybody's happy. Now let's look at our serial monitor and look at that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And so it is looping through there. Why does it repeat? Well, it repeats because after it does it, it comes down and we're in the void loop. So it comes back, it runs the void loop again, and then it loops through the while loop here. And so it's looping through the while loop and the void loop. And that's why the numbers 1 through 10 keep repeating. One of the things is I think once you do something, usually as far as formatting your output, once you do something inside of that uh, while loop, when you leave, it's good to put like print a blank line so you can see which group of code or which group of printout came from inside that loop. And so a lot of times what I will do is I will just after it do a serial dot print print line and then just print a blank, just an empty line. <clears throat> and that makes it a little easier to read the code as it goes. Ooh, what did it not print? Oh, that's not even close. Print line. P-R-I-N-T-L-N. All right, looking green, looking happy. Okay, there we go. Let's look at this. And so now we count to 10. 
and then we get a blank line in there. And you see it makes it a little easier to see those groups of 10 and we've <clears throat> we've slowed it down so it sort of makes it it sort of makes it a little bit nicer, a little bit easier to read, okay? Now, <clears throat> let's practice a little bit with our format formatting of our output. Instead of just printing J if a person uh, just came and saw this, they might not really know what those numbers are. And so, let's put it in conjunction with a, a string that says you are on uh, loop number. Okay, so when I come here, I'm going to add another uh, text, uh, print out a text string. So I'm going to say serial.println. And if I want to print a string, just plug a string in here. I need to put it in the double quotes. You are on loop, loop number. And then close the quotes, close the parentheses, add the semicolon. So let's see what this is going to do now. <clears throat> we're just practicing stuff here that we've learned before. The while loop is new, but we're just practicing some of this formatting business, okay? So here we go. You are on loop number one. You are on loop number two, three. Okay, let's stop that from scrolling. Do you see how this is not, I mean, you normally don't write sentences that way. You would really like the eight to be here on the same line as that, and that way it would be easier to read. So how would I get this this line, this print command and this print command to print on the same line. Well, don't advance the line on the first print. So we just say serial print instead of serial print ln, and it'll print this, stay on that line, and then it will print this. And I bet this looks a little bit neater if we do this. Okay, let's take a look at it. All right, you are on loop three, four, five. Okay, now what's wrong with this? Okay, and this happens quite a bit. That is, you see, I put that and then the one, and there's no space. There's there's no space there because I didn't tell it to put a space there. I just ended right with that R, and then the J comes in right after that. So we should put a space right there. <coughs> Let's try it again. Ooh, got to download it. All right. Okay, so let's take a look at it now. <clears throat> you are on loop, you see. And there it is, loop number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you see, this is the same every time, and then because we just printed out a, a string, we just plug the string in. And here we're printing out a variable, and every time through, j is equal to something different. Okay. Now, you can get creative, and with these with these while loops you can do different things depending on your application and so let's say I wanted to know all of the even numbers between 1 and 20 okay so I start with j is equal to j uh, uh, here let's start <clears throat> with j equal 2 so you see we don't have to we don't have to start with 1 we can start with 2 and we don't have to increment by 1 we can increment by 2 Okay, so it's still going to have the same condition. It is going to print, it's going to go through here as long as j is less than or equal to 10. Let's go ahead and make that 20 this time. So as long as j is less than or equal to 20, it's going to go through here, but this time it's going to increment j by 2 instead of by 1, and it's going to start at 2. So let's take a look at that. This is just showing you don't always have to start at 1 and end at a specific number, and you don't always have to increment by 1. There's different things that you can do here. Okay, look at that, uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. You see we're counting by twos this time because we're incrementing by two. Well, let's, let's count by fives, okay? Let's count by fives. Let's start at zero, and let's count by fives, and let's go all the way up to 100, okay? <coughs> Download it. Okay, 5, 10, 15, 20, look at that, counting by fives. Let me turn the scroll on. 5, 10, 15, 20, 20, 30, I can hardly go that fast. But you see, if you look there, I'm now counting by fives. So you have a lot of flexibility in what you do inside of this for loop. Uh, I mean inside of this while loop, but basically you put the condition here. As long as this condition is true, it will continue to execute the clause.
clause starts with the beginning curly bracket and it ends with the ending curly bracket. Okay, <coughs> so this is uh, <clears throat> this is some pretty neat stuff here. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to show you with the while loop. I think you can kind of figure it out from here. Let me see if I can go back to that original program and this was the program as it ex as it uh, sort of was at the end of lesson six. <clears throat> Remember this is our blinking LED program. <clears throat> Let's run that. Let's call up our serial monitor. Okay. How many times do you want to blink the red LED? Let's say five. How many times do you want to blink the yellow LED? Let's say five. And then let's send it. And then when we come over here, it's going to blink the red one five and the yellow one five. Okay, so this is what we did in lesson six. But in lesson six, we did it with four loops. Well, this time, <clears throat> let's do it with a while loop. Okay, because I think there are a couple of things that you need to you need to pay attention to here. And so I can keep the clause the same pretty much because my my for loop clause began here and ended here. Well, I'm going to leave that 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 clause there, but then here I'm going to replace the for loop with a while loop. So I'm going to say while, and then I put some condition in there, and then it's going to go from here to here. Well, while what? Well, let's say while j is less than or equal to, I'm not going to put in 10 because remember the number of blinks that I want was num red blinks. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to say num red blinks. And then we should say here, this is just a comment, but let's keep our comments good. So we're going to say start our while loop this time. Okay. <clears throat> start our while loop. Okay. Now, what? Let's just see. I'm going to run this and see what happens while j is less than or equal to num blinks. Let's see what happens if we try to run this. Ooh, it doesn't like this. I got an error and it says j was not declared in the scope. Okay. I can't just come in and start using j. If I'm going to use j, I've got to declare it. And I did not declare it up here at the top. So, the first time the Arduino ever heard about J was right here, and it says, what's this J business? I don't know J. Nobody ever told me about J. What's he doing in here? Okay, so if we're going to use J, we've got to declare it. We could declare it up here, but again, it would make more sense to make it a local variable because we're not really needing to pass it around between things, and so we're going to start right here. <laughs> and since it hasn't seen it, we've got to declare it. That J is an int, int J. And since we're going to use j here, we better give it a value, right? And so let's give it a value of equal to 1. And then let's end in a colon. So here we say int j is equal to 1. And so now it is going to be happy, right? Well, maybe not. Okay, maybe not. Let's just see what happens. I hope I don't get this thing hung where I can't stop it. Okay, so let's come up here and see how many times you want to blink red. I want to blink it five. How many times you want to blink yellow? I want to blink it, blink it five. And then you are on blink one, 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 one. Whoa, what's going on? One, one, one. And look at that. That's more than five blinks. It just keeps blinking, 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 blinking. <clears throat> so we have a problem here. And what the problem is, I said J is equal to one. And I said keep blinking as long as J is less than or equal to num blinks. And then I just blink it. What did I not do? I didn't increment J. So J stayed at one. And so if we went back and looked at the serial monitor, it's just staying at one. And this red LED over here is going to blink forever because there's a way for it to get out of this loop. If I'm going to do a while loop with a conditional like that, I have to be responsible to increment J. J is equal to J plus one. Okay. And with the semicolon. And now let's put that in there. <clears throat> it looks like things are going to be happy. And then let's come up. We're going to say five for the red blinks. We're going to say five for the yellow blinks. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So it looks like it's working now. And I have got a little bit of a glitch in there. 
and I am not exactly sure why it's doing that. One of the problems that I have is, and I've mentioned this before, that to have the Arduino over here and my computer is over there, I've got a really long USB cable, and I think maybe that I have got a little glitch coming from that long USB cable, but you can see that it's working now, that basically it's telling me which blink I'm on, and it's blinking the right number of times, and so I took that same function that I was doing in a for loop, but now I've done it with a while loop. So what your assignment is, your assignment <clears throat> is to come in and fix this one where it is working with a while loop as well. And so you've got both of these programs working with a while loop. But one of the things I've got to warn you that you've got to be careful of when you come out of this, J is going to be equal to what? Well, the last time, it, on the 10th time through the loop, it, J is 10, and then at the bottom, J goes from 10 to 11. It comes back up here that says it's J less than or equal to, I mean, num blinks, let's just say it was 10. No, it's 11 now, so it's going to jump down here, and it's going to be right here. And then what you've got to remember is you've got to remember to go back and set J equal to 1, because it's J is equal to 1 here, but this is going to ramp it all the way up to 10, or whatever you set num blinks to plus one more for the last time through the loop. And then you're going to come through here, and this one's never going to execute unless you go back and set J equal to 1 here. So always, right before you start a loop, if you're doing a counter like this, make sure that you initialize your counter. And a lot of times when I'm helping students with their code on a problem like this, they would forget to come down here and uh, <coughs> they would forget to come down here and reinitialize their J. The only reason I tell you that is I don't want you to get stuck, and I'm, if you're not here in my classroom, I would not be there to, to help you figure out what was going on. And so I warn you, always before you initialize your while loop, uh, before you start your while loop, make sure that you initialize your variable, whatever the counter is going to be. Okay, again, thank you. This is Lesson 7. I look forward to see you, seeing you guys very shortly on Lesson 8. Hope you guys are enjoying this. Stick with it. We're going to get to some more interesting stuff here really soon.